What's the most unexpected thing you've seen on Google Earth? Maybe someone messing around with the Street View car, or a not-so-friendly note painted on a roof. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Think about how much data and content there is here. Images from all over the world going back years. And while us normies might just use Google Maps to get to the dentist or go to a dive bar, but maybe not in that order, I found folks who are on a whole nother level. If it was a thing, they'd be like the world champions of Google Maps. In a remote part of the country, a mysterious metal structure that offers a lot more questions than answers. So the, the first time I heard it was the day I found it. That's Bear the Redditor who found the monolith. But since his username would get me demonetized. Yeah, <laughs> you can just call me Tim. So where did Tim start? The initial pictures I found it from the helicopter crew had posted on a Utah government website. Employees of the state of Utah who were doing a wildlife survey initially found the monolith in November 2020. Who does this kind of stuff? <laughs> They're out there researching bighorn sheep populations in the area. Authorities tried to keep the exact location of the monolith a secret. They did a good job of posting photos that would conceal it. They didn't expect someone freakish abilities like me looking at these photos going, oh, I can find that. And with a little help from Reddit, here's how he found the monolith. Someone posted the flight path of the helicopter. And at one point it lost radar contact. When they stopped tracking, usually means they landed or went below radar altitude. And these guys landed and took pictures, so it's gotta be in that area. So that's where he started his search. And this is where it gets really cool to me, whereas you and I might see these photos and really focus on the monolith. Here's what he sees in these photos. Very sparse with vegetation. You know, there's no really deep water grooves. To me, that kind of indicated, okay, it's at the higher end of a watershed system. Looking at that ridge line indicated to me, okay, that's probably the top of a canyon system. My guy is a geographic Sherlock Holmes. I, I do have a minor in geography, but I've never done anything with it. Uh, I've actually worked construction since then because unfortunately construction pays better than being a teacher, which is what I was planning to go into. Then a bit of hunting and pecking in Google Maps. It got a little bit tedious. Looking for key visual elements. The rock at the top of the canyon is a little bit rounded. That huge boulder, a very pronounced spot at the end of the canyon. And 10 minutes later, there it is, a monolith in a haystack. Finding the actual model is, was kind of funny because all you see is a, a black dot. It's actually the shadow leading away from it. If you want to get a sense for yourself of how hard that was to find, there's a link in the description to the exact location on Google Maps so you can go and retrace Tim's steps for yourself. And quick side note, while you're clicking around in Google Earth, if you want to see some of the weirdest stuff on there, check out weirdgoogleearth.com. And it's exactly what it sounds like all the weirdest things that you can see in Google Street View from across the world. The community here seems to be pretty active and there's new posts every day or so. So if you wanna see an escaping prisoner or a reverse Hobbit grandpa, or what looks to be a scene from a horror movie, check it out, poke around. You get all the links back to the original Google Maps location. I'm sure there's a ton of these sites. There's this Twitter account called Street View Encounters that has even more. Uh, I'm not quite sure how real all these are. They don't link back to any source materials and like this one doesn't quite seem right. But nevertheless, it's worth a browse. Links for both of those are down below. Of course, Tim isn't the only person who's great at finding things on Google Maps. Internet sleuths, investigators, and even journalists perform open source intelligence gathering, which leverages open source and publicly available data. One example that sticks with me is when Emily Gorsensky, she's a data scientist and activist, uncovered the exact location of a hidden stash of cleaning products near the beginning of the pandemic. Back in March 2020, the New York Times published a story about two brothers in Tennessee who cleared out shelves of hand sanitizer and cleaning products for miles around. They went on a 1,300 mile road trip buying everything they could with a plan to profit off of price gouging, according to reports. They sold hand sanitizer for up to $70 during a time of product shortages and were literally unapologetic about trying to profit off of the pandemic. He says he never anticipated the struggle other families would go through because of a shortage. Would you say you're sorry? No, I don't think that I would. But a single photo from the article gave Gorsensky everything she needed to locate their stash. 
She shared her process on Twitter to show how small details can be huge clues when you know what you're looking at. And it all starts with boats that she noticed in the background, which along with a nearby town, gave her a few Google results of storage units that could accommodate boats. Looking at the branding of the buildings and cross-referencing with the Google Maps satellite imagery of one of the locations, she was able to roughly match the angles of certain buildings from the original New York Times photo. Then, zooming in, she identified certain colorations in the asphalt here that looked to match, and these brown support pillars that also matched between Street View and the image from the Times. Finally, she was able to find the exact storage unit by lining all that up with the overhang in the building roof here. If you want to put your own open source investigative skills to the test, check out the Twitter account at QuizTime. They post daily challenges and have a pretty active community. As for the brothers, they were suspended by Amazon and eBay, kicked out from their storage unit, surrendered all the cleaning supplies they purchased, and were investigated by the Tennessee Attorney General for price gouging. And the last piece of all this actually goes back to something Tim told me about earlier. 2012 is when I discovered GeoGuessr, the actual game. GeoGuessr. This isn't a new thing, but it was new to me. And it's kind of having a moment right now. One of the players that really captured my interest is this guy. He's a YouTuber and streamer and adventurer called GeoWizard. This could be Israel. I'm just going to go for it. Bangladesh. I'll go Romania. I'm going to go Norway. Correct. Get in. And listening to the way he breaks down some of his explanations is fascinating. Here we are again in Ghana, I believe. Look at that patchworked car. That's hilarious. So Ghana it is. Um, you can tell by the yellow number plates in the patchworked car and the tape on the roof rack. Or check this out. Watch how quickly he essentially pinpoints his location based on a single street view. Next one. Wow. Got to say, this looks like Norway, where I've just come from. Where's the sun? That's what matters. And it's in the north, so we can't be in Norway. That's quite amazing. So we've got to be in Chile or Argentina. And out of the two, the mountains are on my east side. So I would say the chances are that we are in Chile. And I don't know, about here, perhaps. Oh my goodness me. Aside from his GeoGuessr content, he also makes these really incredible travel videos where he seems to have invented or at least popularized this idea of a straight line travel mission, which is a way of using Google Earth and satellite imagery to plan routes across entire countries in a perfectly unnaturally straight line. You know the score. I intend to walk that way in a completely straight line come what may. Which brings him through marshes and across rivers, over mountains, even across private property, where part of the challenge is not only the physical toll of making it across the entire country, but negotiating for passage through people's private property. This is suicide. He has a really dedicated fan base. Some of them have even done their own straight line missions. Up to this point, the farthest I'd strayed from the line was 111 yards. On my end, I tried digging into GeoGuessr myself and clicking around, but I needed a lot of Googling to help me figure out where I was and I'm sure a ton of stuff that would constitute cheating. But I will say it's a fun way to explore the world and see it in a new light. And that's kind of the whole point of Google Earth, isn't it? You know, on Google Earth, you can see anything you want. If, if you want to look at a, a town in Italy, a army base in China, you just wrap it whole and you find all this interesting stuff that you can look at it all. 